Hey everybody, Jimmy with the Triple C Collective and Colin here. And we are ready to bring you episode 6 of Visions Volume 2, The Spy Dancer from Studio La Cachetta. Um, yeah. I probably didn't say that with the right um, French influence cachet, on there. Cachet. Cachet. Um, cachet. I don't know. Possibly. But no I, never took, I never took fuck, uh, French. <laughs> yeah, me so. neither. Um, but they're from Paris, France. And like um, the one cool thing that I'm going to start us off with, with just their name, uh, Studio La Chete, they it means the hideout in English. Cool. And like so, like uh, you so like, know, the, you know those French. They're real, about they're... but but like th- I think that's just so cool yeah. that like three friends from uh, like three guys who's uh, from art college started this studio, and now they call it like it, like they call it the hideout where they were probably referring to their dorm rooms and like little art course, studio yeah, yeah. spaces in college to that stuff. So yeah, like that's so cool. Um, so that's really neat. Just even to like start out here before we even get into this, and dude, this whole episode. It's in a cabaret. Yeah. No, I love this episode because at first I didn't think I was going to like it. Yeah. Right? I went into this episode just like, eh, what? Because it's like a cabaret, like a um, like a dance and all that kind of stuff. Is that something? <clears throat> I've never really seen it in Star Wars. I don't necessarily go out of my way for musicals or stuff like no. that or, you know, kind of like show tunes or anything. But, like, I'll watch them. Um, so I'm not like anti them, but yeah, that, I kind of had. So to anyway, see, yeah, I was I, thrown I, off by it, I had and, a, then, and then I kind of was like, mm, and then I started watching it, and I immediately was like, oh, this is gonna be great. The French are amazing because yeah. this is like very like uh, um, different from anything we've seen even on Visions. Mm-hmm. But it, it's again opening this Star Wars universe, and it feels so lived in now, right? Even compared to like Marvel or like mm-hmm. any of these other. Um, IPs with these big universes now. Uh, Star Wars just feels so lived in compared to those. Like mm-hmm. it, it just now now with visions and all these these shows they're doing that whether you choose to watch or not, it, it does make the world more lived in, more experienced. It, because you're really getting, especially with visions. Like we can, I mean, we're talking about visions, especially with visions where you are literally getting volume one. You got. Seven different yep. animation studio, anime studios from Japan doing it to kind of give that handoff back to like mm-hmm. the people who inf- influenced George and now that going back to them. Right. And then, of course, like Star Wars is a global phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Every, everybody across the world knows Star Wars. And so, like, then that's the next step of what they're doing with with this and you're just getting all these different perspectives of these different things like um in the filmmaker focus for even this episode and that i hear repeated in all of the filmmaker focuses for all the episodes they always especially for volume two because we're going globally they're like they very much so are like make it like about like your culture your influence like like where you guys are from and adding stuff. all this, uh, even just the Japanese culture at the beginning, yes. added a whole new perspective to Star Wars that is adding culture into Star mm-hmm. Wars by proxy, basically. Yep. So, like, adding more culture and more ideas from people outside of America has, has in my opinion, turned out to be great. Mm-hmm. Because it's added so much culture into Star Wars that they can pull from mm-hmm. and, and, and use later, you know? Because these designs are there for... That for future directors to use, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so, all of this stuff is is just what I'm saying is this episode is another great peek into that where right. we see something we'll, we've never <clears throat> seen or may, maybe even uh, anyone would want to see in Star Wars outside of this type of um, platform. Right, and so I don't know. Visions for me has always been the gift that keeps on giving to yeah. me. And without further ado, <clears throat> let's dive in a little bit more. We start out on a wet and rainy planet outside of that cabaret that we were talking mm-hmm. about. Um, I gotta say, I love some of these Imperial transports, and the I loved I love the hard black lines of some of this stuff that they had. Yeah, like, yeah. like because it, this is very much so. I like the way the storm tr- the stormtroopers looked a little chunky. That was yeah, cool yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and you saw the different sizes of stormtroopers. Yeah, yeah. You saw like the different like even the helmets looked slightly different and like stylized and stuff to it but you're right we we, we saw a, a, a plethora of different kinds mm-hmm. of stormtroopers sizes and all that stuff and that was just cool because we hadn't really seen it usually it's they all, all you know, the same it's, yeah it's How all one Luke's, size yeah. yeah all one size we get the luke oh you're a little short for mm-hmm. a stormtrooper aren't you yeah. 
Um, <laughs> but dude, like this was great, and it was breathtaking when we walked into the ca- the the cabaret. Yeah, and when stuff. he finally uh, he walks in, and then he gets introduced to the maitre d' basically yeah. the waitress, and she um, she's very inviting and lo- loves to see a new face, and she he takes off his helmet. And, I never seen you before. Shows him that gives him the. Uh, Gives, gives him and his buddy the yeah, best table. Yeah, gives him and his buddy the best table in the house, and um, it's just a really cool scene because you see you see them going like they are kind of taken off guard because they've never been to something like this. Yeah, this is like they're clearly above their rank. They're in something above their rank, and they've mm-hmm. never been to something like this. And then you see all like the proletariat, like all like the old generals and shit mm-hmm. like, r- riding around like in the audience, and. Um, yeah it's it's awesome and one of my favorite shots is actually shortly after they're they're seated you see the two stormtroopers sit and then the camera kind of like angles up and to the right and then you start seeing um who we eventually find out the 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 hostess who just sat them is uh hittis Mm -hmm. i believe it or hittis is maybe how you say her name and she is like doing this awesome like it's one of those quick cut shots of where you see somebody enter like out on the right and then you see them like basically in the middle of the frame like it, like cut heading out to the left and i love those quick little scene changes and like i love seeing it in animation like for me it's personally just like one of my yeah favorite editing kind. is the best like, yeah. like it's just one of my personal favorite kind of like shots to see and things like that and i just love it because it's just a fun little like trick or whatever um <clears throat> and so uh you know we are finding out that uh, uh, Lo, uh, Louis, yeah. um, is, uh, is then the dancer and, right. and, and Hades and, da- and, uh, Louis are working yeah, together. Yeah, Hades like lowers her guard uh-huh. around Louis mm-hmm. and, uh, she basically explains like, I'm sick of this. Can I like get in on what, whatever they're doing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Which turns out to be kind of like they're, they're spying a little bit. It seems they're, like, you they're, know, they're, they're, working they're gathering the until they're waiting for, they're waiting for a big score or whatever it is. They're mm-hmm. waiting, waiting to do something big. And Loie's just like, no, uh, we don't, we're not ready yet. Like, yeah. This is just, isn't the time your ego is getting ahead of the, the, you know, the horse, or the horses, of, or the cart is in front of the horse. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, so, you know, they're, they're, they're spatting, but then they go, uh, uh, Louis gets a call from a guy, John, um, that we find out and we get a cut to him. He's building a ship and it's really cool. We see this, like, um, just basically this body of a vessel, but they're taking off like the wings of TIE fighters and like putting Mm -hmm. them like on there and stuff. And like this design of that ship of like putting the TIE fighter wings on there, I was just like, Oh man, that's so cool. That's just such a cool design. Yeah, definitely. Um, but what they're talking about is that they're also talking about what's about the new trackers that she got. Because again, what we're getting time and time again is that with the name of the episode is called Spy Dancer. She's probably working for the rebellion now. And they are trying to get trackers on different stormtroopers and weapons so that they can start kind of finding out where all of these people are going. Mm-hmm. Um, they've had issues before. We kind of get from like a line or two of dialogue. Yeah. Or like, are we sure they're going to actually work or whatnot? Um, and, you know, like uh, Louis, she uh, she's also like, you know, like th- this is like a huge thing. We've been helping a lot of the rebellion and like trying to get this stuff better like you know i'm not trying we're not trying to stargaze right like anymore um you know we want to we want I, you know we need to we need to break these bonds basically of this occupation which is something interesting that we do find out in the filmmaker focus that why they why this french animation studio decided to set this cabaret in an occupied imperial um, area yes, yeah. territory I was say, I was is because is because of, get past is because yeah. of the you know France being occupied by Nazis. Yes, and I could. I, and they're they're just a revolutionary um, people. Like they mm-hmm. are very ready to just go out in the streets and march. So yes. like this is very in line with the French spy type of and the resistance. Yeah, fighters th- this is so stuff. French. I didn't know this was a French episode. So when uh-huh. you told me at the beginning of the episode or at the beginning of this. I was like, oh, okay, oh, that makes so much and then, sense. And then you start seeing 
the later things yeah. that just kind of fall into place like this. And like, even like as soon as I went, I didn't know it was French. I thought it was French when I was listening to it. Some of the, um, the, 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 uh, the English dubs had like a, a, what I assumed to be a French accent, but I wasn't sure. And then when I watched the filmmaker focus and got it confirmed, I was like, Oh, this makes all sense. But this also being in this cabaret here reminds me of one of my favorite set pieces of one of my favorite movies of Inglorious Bastard yeah, from yeah, Quentin for Tarantino, sure, for sure. which is also set in a occupied France yeah, in, in, in a movie theater. In, in a of movie a theater, camera, right, yeah. yeah. But like, it, so, all those parallels are there, and like, so it's like, once I saw, once I like watched that filmmaker focus, and I started seeing all this stuff, like again, I was like, oh my god, this stuff is it, like, right. like, like the, French like, films are like it, known it, to be it, wonderful, it, like you know what I mean, like outside of. American cinema, French, has definitely one that's uh, rivaled us, you know, Absolutely. being so small. And so this is great, and this is, like, like when we walked in, it was breathtaking. And then we get the actual, like, show performance of it, and, dude, how about that swan dive that yeah, she does? Yeah, that was so cool. Like, 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 this is, like, it was one of those, like, it's it's beautiful, it's... it's it's like, what is she doing? How is she going to pull this off? Like, what like what is the move, even? <laughs> and then she's... She then... She falls though. That's kind of the problem here. Yeah, she fall. She falls at one point as she's throwing her trackers around. Yeah, yeah. But one thing before the fall is when when, when I saw her fall, I was like, oh my gosh! Like this made like you don't see any like 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 it's like the flying Graysons. There's right. no net. There's no, no there's no, no net no, no. or anything. Yeah. But then you find out th that you do see that there would be maybe like kind of see through things that she's able to like step on, and she makes that misstep. When she sees this like general officer, yeah. and we get our she first, she sees basically a cane and like a uniform, mm -hmm. and she's like, "I know that cane and uniform." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and has like this flashback at, in this moment of like basically falling and having a flashback, and yeah. being, like uh, the imperial officer that she thinks she sees is in this flashback taking her baby away. Yeah, and. Uh, successfully too so that's with you the can k2 tell droid happened. standing i mean the k2 yeah, droid is standing sick. right behind i him. love like, the k2 droid he was right? such a he was a he was the he was a mean it, it's a mean that, i mean it's a mean mug and it's yeah. it's muscle for sure for yeah. um for the lieutenant and or whatever or whatever yeah um, the imperial for sure yeah the imperial officer and um it's crazy so so now we've got uh louis um she's like falling we've got hittis then who takes her little like pink ribbon these ribbon things that they are using like i don't know like yeah are it's these, like are moon night are, are it feels these, like moon night right you know I mean? are these like, like real things that are like really out there in the world because why don't more people have them they fit right i feel like these well, it might be a cultural things. thing yeah it fair. might be something that's only certain cultures use or whatever that's why these people are going to see it because it's a very specific thing that these people yeah. do yeah very different but instead of using it for what they normally use it for dance they she starts using it as basically weapons and yeah. and, and, and rescue devices and in this moment it's a rescue device mm -hmm. to save uh she jumps down right after Loy and uh and, 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 and saves, saves her. her saves her life but the best part is like after it they land on the ground you know like kind of, like kind of fine or whatever and then all the stormtroopers are all yeah so they're happy. like sweet that they, looks they, awesome they, yeah. they, they all think it's part of the show yeah because of course <laughs> they all think it's part of the show and like so that was great um they get you know back in stage and get everything together but louis she gets everybody yeah. out she's like get out through the escape hatch where we're not messing around here we need to go we need to go 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 yeah get and, out like, here. and like Hey, this is like, well, hey, if something happened, let's stay and fight. Like, let let, let me help. Let, let me help and do what I've yeah. always been wanting to try and do right. so far. Let me fight. Let me let me get in there. Yeah, and she's like, no, and, I got to do this alone. You need your mission is yeah, to get yeah. everyone out of here. <laughs> it's to get everyone out of here and have them go meet John at the rendezvous point. I'm calling him right now. Um, and you know, so that's what she does. She yep. she gets them all out of there. She calls um, John, and you know. Um, we get the one line which is similar to Andor. We get the one line of "There's only one way to be free," just like the same way "One Way Out" from Andor and like Andy Circus and stuff. So I I don't know if mm -hmm. that was like purpose. And we have like a little another little flashback where we see the the scene the guy's face and yeah. like whatever. 
and uh, to clarify, because she she's about to start a- the next act of this play to yeah. to to do what she needs to to finish doing what she needs to do, and it's she wants to go after that one officer clearly. Yeah, she wants to go back, go after the one officer because she got enough of the trackers out there to feel good or whatever about. Um, one of the best things is like her music alien. Yeah. It's <laughs> so cool. Those, it, the, the instruments, like all that was so interesting. It, it was great, but I, they give him the classic line of, I have a bad feeling yeah, about exactly. this. Like right before, right before what we'll call like the dance battle, basically mm-hmm. of, you know, she gets back out there, you know, she gets back out there, starts her dance again and is, um, we get that glimpse like the way that they have everything, whether it's in the flashback or whether it's in the moment, they have that imperial box, basically making him look out like Satan. Like it's yeah, always oh, he's sure. always silhouetted in black, but the the background is like very red and vibrant like that. But then there's then you got the K two S droid that just has the red eye and like yeah, the it's all very black reminiscent and... of her of her uh her, of her memory. Yeah, so it's it's you're seeing these parallels and you're like, all right, something's going on here. And he's got that like I said, he's got the cane and the the thing, and she's ready to go off. So she starts dancing and doing her thing and. She gets a chance at this imperial officer. Finally, yep. she gets close to him and pulls out this like blade from her arm. It's like a Baraka blade super, from Mortal Kombat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she gets this close to him before not doing it because the camera pans to the front of the guy and it's not the guy from her. It's memory. not the same guy from years before. This guy's got an. He's much younger. He's got an eye patch, and uh, he realizes, oh, this is a rebel, rebel, yeah. rebel scum. You know, yeah. like. And then that's when she needs to get get out of there. She gets, yeah. Um, and they start having their fight, basically. Down, yeah, they start. And she starts using those again, the ribbon, like yeah. Moon Knight. It's so cool. It's it's such a great thing using. Yeah, the ribbon, the the Moon Knight call out is amazing. Um, but yeah, the Imperial droids down there. All the stu- stormtroopers start like taking out their guns, putting on their helmets as they're all facing this rebel scum. All in the middle. Um, and then of course we get, we get, um, Louis, she, her movement, like this was very much so a non Jedi episode, but she's moving like a Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. She's, this. she's so like, skilled like, like, at like, what she like, does. like if she's not like, if she doesn't know she's force sensitive, she's absolutely been touching right, I agree. Into, I agree. It, touching Again, into I that. think this is showing us the different aspects of the Force. Not everyone yeah. is a Jedi or, or, or whatever. Right. Which is awesome. Some people use it for art. Some people use it for dance. Some people use it for dance and spying. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, because that just makes more sense with her fluidity and her movements and, and uh, her the, the way she's able to move yeah. the, the, um, the garment. Yeah, and but yeah, this is so you know, Hetis uh, comes back and she has a blaster yeah. with a scope and everything. Yeah, and she she comes back to help finally. Um, and but, I, you know what? Finally, you know, I'm glad she came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she I, definitely I, well, saves she, the day a little bit. She absolutely does, and she's been a blast. And um, you know, there it, she's awesome because she doesn't listen to Louis here. Yeah, and like, which I understand, Louis lost the child, and yeah, this yeah. is kind of her surrogate daughter. Yeah, it's not really her daughter, but you know. Um, and but um, we get Louis is like trying to calm down, but she's, this conversation she's having with the officer is like so interesting. Yes, yeah. Um, because there's like, a tension that because there's something she has that he doesn't even realize. Well, there right, and there is something that she has noticed. Yeah. About him that we as the audience haven't necessarily been yeah, and, totally. But we, why didn't he, she kill him? Why did she stop? You yeah, know, I know it's not him, but still, like it's yeah, still yeah. an imperial. You're already there. You might as well do it. Right. Um. Um. We get the. Uh, so as that's happening, they're having this conversation. She's kind of talking about like, what are you doing? Why are you not being like yourself or kind of honoring yourself a little bit? And then we get the uh, like. She jumps out the window with the, with that Imperial officer after the missed shot from Hedis and be, after the K2 droid comes after them as yeah, well. Like yeah, um, straight horror. So, so, they're, so they're up on the roof now. Hedis is coming down to head off the K2 droid. And bro, how about when she throws the K2 droid into that ribbon oh. and just rips him right, apart? Right, right. So like, cool. It's so cool. Yeah. It's so awesome. And um, that whole, like, this whole sequence is is just amazing. Because then we get a cut back up to the top. And we get, um, 
We get Louise. She's getting like pulled down a little bit by that K2 droid right before uh, Hittus is able to um, take care of that K2 droid. We also get the Imperial officer with like almost a dark saber esque type. Yeah, he's got, it's weapon. more like it's more like a, one of those uh, ba- uh, electrical battering rams yeah. from like the the Jedi game, the Jedi Survivor games. Like, yeah, it, it seems more like a, it, it is definitely like a strong weapon, but. Yeah. It's not as strong as a lightsaber, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That that that's very true. Yeah. Um, we get that, and like the uh, that <laughs> she well, it's actually using that weapon is like what gets uh, Louis free, and she's able to roll away from it, and then that's where she has like she has this final like conversation. He's, she's able to like knock out his like weapon or his saber yeah, out of she his grabs hand. it she grabs it from his hand and throw, uh, throws it and throws it and yeah and has this like tries to lift up his hat and then um where i was like man why is she trying to lift up his hat like that mm-hmm. he's got an eye patch on here and, and then, then it kind of goes back to like the, the flashback of mm-hmm. and you see the, the the baby yeah that she lost when it was walking away and it has that it has the blue eye yellow eye thing mm-hmm. and then you notice like oh eye patch is covering the yellow, what would be a yellow eye, and that's like she's trying to touch, she's trying to move that off his face, and Try, and trying to move the head to see yeah. if there's horns yeah. still there, yep. like she has, or whatever, yep. and um, she's like yelling at him, he because he's like, you know, the, speaking of the imperial guard that like took my him father, away, yeah, yeah, my father, and I'm like my father before me taking the Luke line, yeah. and stuff, and like, like that's why he's dressed in this imperial garb because he's he he thinks. You know, the man who took care of him was his father, or yeah. like technically his father. But nope, uh, nope. she uh, she is his mother. And this is one of those moments where he doesn't accept it, though. In no. the same way like, like you'd expect. But, uh, yeah, he doesn't accept it necessarily. He's kind of angry. and Yeah, he really, yeah. We as the audience definitely know it's him, and like we as, and, and she she knows it's him. Mm-hmm. But he, he's got some reckoning to deal with he it's really like, what, does you just say mom and you join the other side at that moment like, yeah that doesn't right? seem very plausible but yeah so and yeah so then we get we get the ad ads yeah up. yeah and, i mean this and they're is, on a glass building so you yeah. know what they say the ad ads are there we get john, <laughs> put ad ads on a glass building Throw john it. and uh Hedis show up to be able to get louis out of there out of there yep um and you know they ask like what happened with that officer like down there and you know she's like i found him yeah i finally found him and i have a way to him and he has a way back to me now yeah and we get a cut then to the imperial ship he takes off his hat we see that he has the ground down horns that are like that he either cuts off or like completely removed however that works there's a hologram Um, of him as a baby with the one yellow eye and one blue and it's from the chest like the little like um a uh, piece of the necklace that um, Louis was wearing throughout most of that show and stuff. And then, um, yeah, the hologram is there. And the one thing we see about it is that there's also a tracker. Yeah, oh, he's holding it, too, behind yeah. his back, like, hiding it. Yeah, and he puts He's it, hiding it. Like, yeah. I don't want anyone else to know about it. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. My opinion is there's more to their relation. There's more to their story left. well uh, and right? i love that yeah is it, i mean will they be like a uh like a luke and vader because it's to, like i kind of a, it's kind of an opposite thing going on i love it yeah. literally though that's part of what they talk about in the filmmaker focus too is that they wanted to have in, instead of just doing the simple like father son thing they wanted to do a mother son mm-hmm. and, and invert it a little bit and do that and see where like that took them and everything um and so like for me i just loved it like the this all of this stuff was awesome um and like we talked about as well that the the story is very heavily influenced from the french occupation during nazi germany and all of that <clears throat> during the nazis um occupying france during world war ii and all of that um one of the things that i did find very interesting is that uh louis herself was influenced on um a louise fuller um who has like a dance kind of fighting uh who was like kind of like a uh like a dance fighter like a martial artist kind of 
Um, but then the spy portion of it is actually inspired by Mata Hari. Oh, or even, one of my favorite stories. Or even Josephine Baker. Yep. Who also... Another they, one of they, my favorite stories. They Josephine Baker and Mata Hari. But the Mata Hari story specifically in Paris and France is very, very interesting. And... and I do not know. She was she was, enough, a, she was yeah. a, uh, like a um, a sexy dancer, a cabaret uh-huh. dancer, and she would uh, she would take home German officers and feed that information to who it needed to be fed to. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, and um, so yeah, because they were able to travel and use their celebrity to get around the they that's where like Louis like that's where part of like her influence for what they what made that final version of what we saw here like her and that was so really cool yeah um it was really great um seeing them like talk about the different like french architecture and the different like moulin rouge and stuff like cabaret that's still out there in um france one thing about the voice actor um or the voice actress of louis that i thought was really cool that i always love um is that her name is uh camille uh cotton and uh she is Mainly known as a comedic actress. Oh, cool! And they, I didn't, but yeah. but they decided like to go with her because they wanted her because they knew she could hit these like emotional like pivot points for like Louis and stuff. And like, ah oh, man, it's great. It was a great episode. It, like the did voice, she do both? Uh, um, the French, the French, and uh, English, or just English? Or um, you know what? That's a I think she did both. Okay. They didn't specifically say it in there like sometimes they okay. do. So I don't know. I am under the impression she did both, but she I would went, assume. I, I mean, um, most French people know English too. Yeah. So. And but this was great, man. This this whole episode was really awesome. I am loving Visions. Uh-huh. We've got three episodes left, and then you know we're gonna be taking a Star Wars break until Ahsoka in August. Hey. Um, but yeah, this is this is awesome. That, go watch Visions. Go watch the filmmaker focuses, um, and go enjoy new worlds of animation that you probably didn't even know were there. Yeah. And uh, without further ado, I am Jimmy with the Triple C Collective. And I'm Colin. We want to thank you all for joining us. Please like and subscribe to our video and to our channel. We hope you all stay safe. And as always, may the Force be with you.